So what are the best settings for YouTube? You know, it can be kind of confusing and frustrating to figure out the best settings from your video editing software for your video export. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the best recommended YouTube settings, plus I'm gonna show you exactly how I export a video from Adobe Premiere and upload it on YouTube, coming up. Hey, what's up? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And right now we're in the middle of a four part series about how to shoot a YouTube video with a camera like the M50 or a similar DSLR and mirrorless camera, how to do thumbnails, how to edit, and now the best export settings. So if you actually wanna watch one of the other videos in the series, you can click or tap the YouTube card or I'll put a link to the whole playlist in the description below. But I just finished up editing the video that I shot on this M50 and we're taking you through the whole process. Now the next step is to look at YouTube. We're gonna look up the best settings first and then we're gonna go through Premiere and I'm gonna show you exactly how I export videos step-by-step -step with a few pro tips. Let's dive into it. So how do I actually know that these are the best settings for YouTube? Well, the cool thing is YouTube tells us it's recommended upload encoding settings. So I'm gonna link to this page I'm about to show you in the description below, but let's go through it kind of line by line. And the first thing it says is the container. It says that it should be in an MP4. And this is something a lot of people miss. A lot of times people put out like MOVs and other files, which will be fine, but sometimes they take longer to process, they might not look right. So you might as well upload like the best format and so it's an mp4 format next is the audio codec we're not going to worry too much about that but that one um, is recommended there next is the video codec and it's kind of a fancy stuff here's the thing you don't know, need to understand it just like use it as a checklist right so the video codec is h.264 and then it gives you some more stuff but we can collapse these windows now the frame rate is one of the most important things we wanna talk about. Because here's the thing, if you remember back to part one in the series, and if you haven't watched the full series, again, check it out, we'll link to it in the description below. We talked about how to shoot a video. And when we started out shooting our video, we shot it in a certain frame rate. It's important to keep the frame rate consistent through the whole process. And so what I mean is, if you start in 30 frames, you wanna edit in a 30 frames project, and then you wanna export in 30 frames a second as well. And sometimes when the video looks sketchy or weird or there's weird motion, it's because something was done wrong. Like if you shot it in 30 but export it in 24, it might not look right. If you shoot it you know, uh, in a certain frame rate and mess with the process, and so right here, it talks about common frame rates. YouTube's cool because it will accept other frame rates, but it tells us what those should be. And then it gives us a few other details about it. But here's the probably the most important thing that we need to know, and it's the bit rate. This is actually how large the file size is. Now, when it comes to YouTube, a big mistake people make is they export super large file sizes, not necessarily realizing that YouTube is gonna compress it anyways. What does that do? Well, if you, export your video and it's like a gig, a gigabyte, it's gonna take you a lot longer to upload, especially if your internet speed is fast. Um, it's gonna be down process. It's gonna take your computer longer to export, probably. And so it's really gonna slow down your whole workflow. So when we toggle bit rate, what we want is to actually make the file size essentially the minimum amount of file size that we can have in our software, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So for example, if we were editing a 4K project, we would want the video bit rate to be 35 to 45 megabytes per second, MBS. We shot in 1080, and we shot at 30 frames a second, and so what it's saying is that our video bit rate from a standard form rate should be 10 megabytes per second. If we had a higher frame rate, like 60, and, and why would we do that? Well, if we had a 60 frame, uh, frames per second project. Maybe it's because you just like to vlog in 60, but maybe it's because we're doing action sports. We're doing some snowboarding footage and we want you to be able to see all of the motion in that video. Well, then you wanna make sure that you give the file size enough uh, megabytes per second to support all of those visuals and those extra frames that are happening in the video. So now that we know all this, what we can do is jump over to Premiere for our export. So I'm gonna go to File, export and I'm gonna say media. And we'll go through this line by line, but here's what's cool. Format, H.264. Why'd I pick that? Because YouTube told me to, right? 
And then the preset, it says match source, which is a high uh, bit rate. There are some presets here. We could go YouTube 1080p HD, and that could solve it for you right there. If you look down 1080p, and here's what we can do. We can scroll down to the bit rate. It's actually 16, and maximum bit rate is 16. But guess what? YouTube just told us that actually the bit rate for 1080 only needs to be 10. Now, 16 is going to be fine. It's going to probably just look better, like, and YouTube might down process it. But if you wanted to speed up your workflow, what you might do is you might say, just match the source, which is going to be really high. And then I'm going to scroll down. This all looks good. All of this is pretty much locked in because they're just matching the source. So Premiere makes it easy. But what I can do down here is there it is. See, there's 10 right there. And here's what I like to do. I take the maximum bit rate. I just max that out as high as it goes. Here's what that means. It's basically saying that the target bit rate is 10 megabytes a second. The file for various, the main, for, for the bulk of the video, it'll be 10 frame rates a second. But by having a maximum, let's say there was some scene where you uploaded at, from After Effects and there was crazy motion, or all of a sudden there was all kinds of dynamic stuff happening. And what you needed was a little bit more file size to keep all of those graphical movements looking sharp and not breaking down and becoming pixely or ugly then by maxing out your max bit rate, it just gives Premiere the permission to basically do that. So if we wanted the leanest export possible, knowing that there's really no reason to put out a higher quality than this because YouTube's gonna make it 10 megabytes per second, then we're basically good to go with just that. Now, sometimes I'll jump over to audio as well and just make sure that the audio quality is high because I want people to hear, uh, hear me. If we look back at the export settings, we could see that for stereo, it's actually, 384 kilobytes a second. If it's mono, you want 128 kilobytes a second. And so in this case, we actually have it on the highest 320. So that's great. That'll sound amazing. Keeping in mind that something like a Spotify or a lot of MP3s you might download are more like 128 or sometimes even lower. So 320 is a really good uh, bit rate for audio. So now that's already been set up. So there's really nothing else we need to do here um, except for export it. Now, we could queue it um, if we want and use Adobe Media Encoder. I like doing this if you have multiple videos that you've edited in your timeline and you want to stack them all up. And before we do that, we're going to do one final thing and just pick where this video is going to live. I'm going to go to our most recent folder in Dropbox and I'm going to title it up. So I'm going to say 2019 06 12 and this will be the home office ideas on the Sean Cannell channel version one and you know again sometimes i maybe export a video watch it and i'm like oh something was wrong i need to go back and make an edit but i should be good with that and then here's the deal boom we're going to hit export and now it's going to render through that video process through that video now let's actually just take a quick step back before we click that export button and that is this when you want to export a video from a premiere timeline you want to make sure that this area right up here is starting at the beginning of the video and is ending right as the video ends. And so another way to do that is you can actually right click right at the end of the video and you could say mark out. This is your out point. So there's an in point, there's an out point. So here's what we're gonna tell Premiere to do. We're gonna say anything underneath this selection area, we want that to be in the final video. If you've ever had a video with like extra black at the end, it's because this was like this and this would just be dead space. Or if you've ever had a video with like unnecessary stuff in the beginning, it's maybe because um, of not having those in and out points set right. And actually, let's say I was to move my file, let's say you had like some weird B-roll over here and a bunch of other footage over here. If you just put your in and out points basically at the front, no matter where your content is on the timeline, then it's gonna export this video, makes sense? So I'm gonna just ripple delete that again, take this back to the beginning of the timeline. And so that is the area and I'm plus, pressing plus and minus to zoom in to make sure I'm right at the end of that video, great. And then I can go to the beginning, zoom in and make sure that it's right at the beginning. So now we're fully ready to export this video. All right, now that the video is fully exported, we're ready to upload it to YouTube. So I have my file folder here with the final files. You also see this is the thumbnail that we designed in part two of this video series. If you actually wanna see my process where I show how to do this in Photoshop, just click or tap the YouTube card and you can go watch that video. And then I also mentioned that sometimes I do an export and there's maybe something wrong. So I actually ended up with two versions of this video. So just a tip, you know, I played this back and then I was like, okay, let me tweak some things. So uh, I changed it, I made version two, 
This is our final video file here on my desktop of the computer or rather in this folder. So now I'm ready inside of my YouTube studio beta for my YouTube channel here. I'm gonna click the little upload video icon up here at the top and it's pretty straightforward. All I need to do is drag this video right over to the upload and it's gonna upload it here on YouTube. Now, a huge thing that I would recommend that we don't have time to cover in this video is this is where everything starts. I mean, the title, the description, the tags, of course, the thumbnail that we uh, talked about in part two, this is everything if you wanna get your video discovered. Remember, content is king, but marketing is queen and she runs the household. So if you actually wanna learn about mastering the marketing of YouTube, the title, the description, the tags, even topics, and some of the best ways to get views and subscribers, check out my free masterclass at thinkmasterclass.com or I'll also link to it in the description below. Boom, all right, now our video is exporting and going on YouTube. But here's the thing, this brings us to the end of our four part series, but really the beginning of what I believe is the most important part of our YouTube journey, and that is the strategies. That's the kind of things that you do after you upload the video, the titles, the description, the tags, and all of that kind of stuff. So if you've been loving this series and you want some more training about how to actually get views, optimize your videos, and some of those next steps, I have a free masterclass and it's about an hour long and I walk you through exactly my strategies for how I title videos, position videos, so they get massive views, and that's how I was able to quit my job and go full-time on YouTube. So if you wanna watch that, it's at thinkmasterclass.com, or I'll post a link to it in the description below. You can watch it free for a limited time. Normally, it's a part of some of our advanced courses that we have students that go through to learn YouTube at a higher level, but you can watch it free for a limited time, so check it out in the description below. Question of the day, do you have any questions about exporting videos? I hope this tutorial was helpful, but let me know if you have any additional questions and what other kind of videos would you like to see in tutorial series like this? Let me know in the comment section below. Appreciate you for checking out this video. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.